<clears throat> hey guys, so I've been um, kind of focusing on like legacy and um, all of, you know, starting what what is my legacy? I've really been hitting on that this semester. So um, about six weeks ago, I did a vlog um, where I talked about starting my legacy through improv. Um, and then a week or two before that, I talked about what is a legacy and how do you how do you leave a legacy? Um, and yes, I. Alexander Hamilton is totally the reason that uh, I've kind of been obsessed with the whole thought of what is my legacy. And I'm so not ashamed to admit that, which definitely just means I'm Hamilton trash, which is totally what we call our fandom. But you know, I'm geeky and I'm okay with that. I mean, Broadway, right behind me. Anyway, um, I've been thinking a lot about it and there's a quote from Hamilton um, that is it's beautifully written. Um, and go and quote it. You don't have to tell anybody it's from a musical. I don't care. Um, and it says, it says from one of the most heart-wrenching songs in the entire musical. There are 46 songs in this musical. <laughs> a lot of very happy songs and some sad songs and heart-wrenching songs. And this is one of them. Um, I'm going to attempt to read this in context because Legacy. What is a legacy? It's planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. I wrote some notes at the beginning of a song someone will sing for me. America, you great unfinished symphony, you sent for me. You let me make a difference. And then there's a lot more. If I keep going, I'm probably going to cry because, like I said, heart-wrenching song. But just that first part. Legacy. What is a legacy? It's planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. And, you know, everybody kind of thinks, like, Oh, there's, you know, the Disney legacy. There's, you know, even the American legacy. You could really put it that way with the founding fathers. And, you know, Hamilton. Or, uh, not even Hamilton. Everybody forgets about him. George Washington, uh, Jefferson, Lincoln. Like, legacies are a big deal. Like, that's what we teach our kids, you know, in their history classes. And, uh, I don't know. I just, I want to be different. Like, speaking of the Disney legacy, just for a split second. I'm actually, like third or fourth cousins with Walt Disney himself. However, because I'm further down the line, I get no money. Like, no joke, my dad's biological mom was a Disney. Like, that was her last name. She was Grandma Disney. Um, and she was his second cousin. So I'm like, right there, but not quite close enough to get anything for that. I can't even really claim the Disney legacy, but I totally am. Um, and if you want to fight me over that, go for it. I can get her death certificate from my dad to prove to you she was a Disney. So, anyway, that is a side note. However, legacies have to start somewhere, and those always start with opportunities. And opportunities are everywhere. You just have to be willing to take them no matter how lame they may seem. I mean, we just finished doing Mousetrap. I was house managing that. My track record at MNU, theater-wise, has been be in the fall production, and then backstage the spring production. Um, and it's been that way all three years, which I think is kind of weird that it's worked out like that. I've yet to actually perform in a spring show. But, uh, you know, that's really part of my legacy. It's part of my story. and It's part of who I am. And, you know, if it could change, it'd be beautiful because I love to perform. I love to be in front of people. But if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. I'll just keep going. I you know, House managing is really fun. I mean, I'll think it is because it's a lot of work backstage and before the show. And, you know, you spend times at rehearsals and backstage and building stuff and doing things. And you have no free time, but it's so much fun. But then there's um, this other show. It's called A Midsummer Night's Dream. m and actually did it last spring, and I house managed it. Um, but the Culture House is doing it, and I am stage managing. And I am volunteer voluntarily stage managing it. So I don't get paid anything. I just show up every Thursday night from 5.30 to 9.30. And I sit there and I listen to these. Um, the age range is 12 to 20, but all the kids are 14, 16, 17. Like, you know, really the middle school slash freshman in high school. And there's a couple older. But for the most part, these are all younger kids. And I sit and I listen to these, quote these lines from Shakespeare. And act out these roles that I've watched a million times because, you know, we've already done the show. I was wrapping it tonight, like, unintentionally. 
but it's great because they're starting somewhere and for some of them this is what they want to do they want to be a performer that's what i want to do but they're taking opportunities they're you know doing this class and doing this role and going to perform a show and then they can stick that on their resume and then that opportunity can lead to something much bigger later um and then i'm also directing a show for the student directed one acts here on campus and directing is a lot like stage managing only twice as much work and you get a tiny bit more credit for directing than you do for stage managing or house managing but i mean either one is just as fulfilling so I'm doing all, I design the costumes and the hair and the makeup and the set and everything. I cast the actors. I, I literally do everything and it's just a great learning experience. Um, but also it makes a statement you know, maybe one day there will be some teenage girl who, you know, watches my films or my shows or whatever, whatever I end up doing, or even if something as simple as. I'm teaching a theater class in high school. Maybe that's where my legacy is. But they, you know, we're just going to go with the whole I'm on Broadway thing because that's that's where my heart is right now. And, uh, you know, they have pictures of me up on their wall and they look up to me even though they may have never met me. And it's just one of those things that I'm like, they're going to read my autobiography or a biography written about me or whatever. And they're going to see she stage managed these shows. She house managed she did things behind the scenes when she wasn't on screen or on stage and you know that that says something because then you're gonna have that kid who looks at me and it's like I could never be on stage I'm terrified to do that but my favorite actress did behind the scenes stuff that's cool I want to be like her I'm gonna do that and um, then, then they go and they do it and the start of any good legacy is taking opportunities so I'm taking every opportunity that comes my way to direct, stage, manage, act, whatever it is. I take every opportunity, no matter how insanely busy I get. I mean, I've literally in the last like 48 hours, I have slept for maybe six. Oh, well, I'm doing what I love. I'm getting to be with people who love doing what I love. And, you know, the sleepless nights don't matter. If you're doing what you love, those don't matter. If you're really, truly passionate, oh, well, sleep will come when it comes. But yeah, people look at me like I'm crazy because I give up 95% of my time outside of class or work doing theater things. And that's not normal. I don't care. I'm doing what I love. I'm seizing the opportunities and I'm planting seeds in a garden I may never see. I'm starting a legacy by seizing every opportunity. So um, I'm going to wrap this up because I could ramble on forever about this. But seize the opportunities. Oh, you know, you see the football team needs a water boy. I don't know, I'm just, you know, what you know what I'm saying. But seize that opportunity. Maybe the uh, worship band at your church needs somebody to sing backup or play the tambourine. If your passion is music and you want to be a worship pastor, seize that opportunity and go for it. It may be scary at first, but, you know, if it's not scary, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. Like, it's just, if it doesn't scare you to do something that you love, do you really love it? If it doesn't scare you to take a new opportunity, should you be doing it? Um, go for it. You know, take that leap of faith and just go for it. Um, say, here I am. Use me. Take every opportunity. And don't let people tell you you're crazy. Because if you're truly passionate about it, there's no such thing as crazy. So, seize the opportunities, start a legacy, and uh, I'll see you around.